over the years, we've seen how social media has transformed the way people live their lives. Just like some people cannot do without food or water, some others cannot do without social media. And for some, it is a means as to which they put food on their table. I am Nonso Igwe, and I welcome you to another beautiful episode on Catholic Faith Forum. Joining me today is Chi Ma Chi Chi Chi. How far now? How are you? I'm doing? fine. How are you? I'm alive. And together, <laughs> we'll be discussing social media and the 21st century yes yeah, so. stick with us because it's going to be such an exciting episode don't go anywhere when we come back from the short break we'll dive into our discussions trade off stay with us <laughs> welcome back this is still catholic faith firm and i'm known so and chima and i will be discussing social media and the 21st century so Chima, what was the first social media you first? When did you start using social media? Well, it's definitely Facebook. Everybody, I think everybody started with Facebook. No, some people started with some other things. Well, MySpace was exactly. there. There was High Five. There were. There I don't was, even know Chima. Ah, you know there was things? High Five. There was That's this such an app old that man. my dear, <laughs> we have old. We have really old. <laughs> so I, I think I started using Facebook too at some point, and then we chat all night. I don't know. I can't do that now. Anyway, never. So how do you think that affected this? century 21st i know uh, i know i see you on twitter a lot mm -hmm. so how do you think that affected your own life okay my own life i just believe that i'm more connected to the world around me at okay. least i can know when things are happening S especially twitter because twitter is a it's a community it's exactly. a news community it is is a platform where everything happens in real time so you can see people's thoughts in real time you can see breaking news in real time mm -hmm. so it has affected me more because i'm more in tune at least if anything happens i can be one of the first people in the world to hear so that really? ah yes <laughs> as far as i'm active on twitter okay. these things are part of the for, me, for me it's not like that because i don't know why i don't i don't know you why. know they use no. that now <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to laugh. Like, I don't know why it's like that for me. I'm not really an avid user of um, social media. So, well, I'm, I think I'm, I'm going to learn from you. Mm. If you are willing to teach me how to use it, 30 well, plus, like you. How do you want to start learning me? <laughs> now? I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, are there some positive or negative things that social media can do? For you as a person? Yes, yeah, like everything that has its own good sides has, has bad its, sides yeah. too. So, there is the issue of cyberbullying. It's yeah. very rampant. Again, you think Twitter as an example. And everybody thinks they have opinions oh, in your God. lives. And see, to be frank, eh, to be very frank, I hold a personal belief that some opinions should just be kept to yourself. But mm -hmm. because of social media and the freedom of expression it has given everybody, people can now say things that can possibly put themselves and other people in trouble. I mean, I think so these just, are some of the yeah, dangers. Yeah, just the social yeah. media age that mm. once your life is out there, people are definitely going to have something to say about it so if i put myself out there if i if, if nobody sees me then they don't know nobody what to say. will say anything they won't guess yeah. and say oh maybe she probably went to do this I, I saw a tweet once and the girl just um she's i think she said something around um she can't date men that are <laughs> <laughs> all those she can't yeah she can't i date, don't think those people she can't date men that, are, that, that don't end they something will, they will be fine <laughs> and they saw body zoomed her shoes and i'm like how you see? like how do you even think about zooming the shoes they will all be fine they will and they all zoom, be so fine they look at the person that is saying she can't date him and that is not any um, 800k a month i'm like really how in a way too that's not good because you have to you're also shaming the girl who Maybe it has her preferences due to her own value systems. Really? We don't know whether her value well, systems so are flawed. Now, especially in our no, country today. It. Maybe her daddy is Dangote's brother or something. We don't know. <laughs> so it's probably her reality. And she's talking about, she's talking from that side. So yes. that's the downside to social media. Zooming her shoes is cyberbully. Do you know how she got those shoes, bro? <laughs> Him, I can't believe you. <laughs> so I remember, I know a lot of people say they use social media. When I see social media now, I, I imagine that if I was very active, I would have done, I would have probably done something around social media for my thesis in school. Mm. So do you think that it, that a dead education a in lot, any way? A lot. Like you it, said, yeah. you would have done it for your thesis. There are several studies, yes. foreign, home-based, even sponsored by universities here. And Nigeria universities, to be frank, we don't really sponsor research don't, like that. Please don't, they don't sponsor anything. <laughs> we don't, I don't they don't sponsor about. research like that. Yeah, they, they yeah. have quite a lot of studies on social media because it has affected a lot of things in the country. Look at the elections that put um, exactly. um, President Buhari into power. It was, it was basically a social media campaign as far as I'm concerned. 
So um, there, it has aided education. People have become smarter. Mm -hmm. People have become dollar too because you know you can learn rubbish and you become oludo. <laughs> so all those type of things happen. And social media is actually a very key part of it. But then for me, I think when social because social media is out there, people don't really um, research as much. I mean, hardcover research. You don't go to the library anymore. Then go and check the catalog and know that, okay, I'm looking for something. Ah, my dear, when somebody you will know, tweet information Shima, for you, you know, what do you want to buy research in school, again? I never thought that there was a need to study the library. Mm. But some people actually study the, the library and they know that, oh, at some sections you see some things. I don't think people do that now because you just go online, just ask a random question on Twitter and then, or there's Quora, Quora as well. Quora, you just ask Reddit. a question and then people are ready to, to provide hard exactly, facts Exactly, ready you. to answer you and then say everything. So, and social media, how has it helped your social life? I mean, in, have you gotten any friends from social media? Well, I've gotten a few. That you uh, met like later on physically. Yeah, I've gotten a few that I met physically. I've also gotten a few that were online friends and we are, I, I hope we stay online friends. I don't know if I want to meet them. But I'm very happy because our interactions are actually very wholesome. And I take one or two things away from them. So yeah, wow. it has helped my social life. Yeah, I really use social media. I, I don't I don't think I, I have try. any friend. I think the one time I wanted to have a friend, how can you be inviting me to come somewhere? I just said, you know what? I don't think I can do this because it's not for me. Like, <laughs> no. So um what are some effects of um consumption of, of information on social media? Um, like I said, you can learn rubbish and become a lodo. That's one. You can learn and become smarter. Okay. You can also learn and your value systems are twisted. So there's a lot of things that um, social media can actually if, um, cause in the life of people. It can affect national change. The NSAS protest exactly. started on social media exactly. from 2016, 2017, 2018, before we got to 2020 and everybody decided to take it from the internet to the to road the so yeah all of these Shima, are cha uh, changes calm down calm down calm down don't go anywhere when we come back from the short break we'll talk about how you can use social media for your business stay with us <music> welcome back this is Catholic faith firm and we're discussing social media and the 21st century so chima we'll talk about how social media can or we want to talk about how social media can be used for your business. So have you ever used social media for business? I remember one time you were doing something. Yeah, so there, was a, there was a time I tried to, you know, um, go into um, selling merch, yeah. merchandise and stuff. And um, well, unfortunately, I'm now part of the statistics that says 80% of startups fail. <laughs> So yeah, it's so in my business was, the, was social media. See, we are trying to encourage people here, Chima. You're not, <laughs> we are, we are because not I couldn't them, sell market. No, you are say not supposed to be telling them that. If you don't sell, rather. <laughs> You're not supposed to be telling them that you started and then you stopped. So I remember, I know that you probably had like a fire in there yeah. to start, mm. first of all. So how can people continue? Because you know, because you started something. Yeah, I so the experience. Looking at yourself and knowing that you had some pitfalls, what do you think people can do to actually get better well, at this? Well, I'm not a business analyst or educator. So okay. but the only thing I can tell you is that for your social media presence, you have to come on strong as much as possible yeah and content, yeah content wise um tell people what you do tell people what you're selling tell people the value of your product tell people why um your product is the best out of all other products that are similar and you can do this with social media it's all social media also has a way of making everybody content creators exactly in a way because everything you put out there is content whether it makes sense or it doesn't make sense so if you can actively manipulate this you can actually you know make yourself um put out good content that will help drive okay. leads to your business and so, one yeah. key thing is engagement always engage people always even always. if someone says it's nice thank you, like you. It, thank you like it oh, let it's them not know nice it. you like thank the comments you. like even if you say it's not nice or you oh, tell I, them I why do you it think it's not nice. nice stuff like that you yeah just, I, I remember i saw a tweet from a brand mm. and then People were lashing out the brand, lashing on and say, oh no, this is, not your, this is not what you're supposed to do. It's not supposed to be this way, blah, 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 blah. And then the smart guy behind um, the social media um, um, management, I mean, their yeah, community management there, just started liking all the hateful comments and was even leaving them love and like peace and love and all that, peace and love, peace out to you and everything. So for, for that brand, it did well because 
by the time you, you are saying something bad about and bad about it and bad about the brand, and then the brand is just giving you peace sign, it go be <laughs> like it go be and everything. Loki, that's a job, like, um, like she um, might um, be stop it. <laughs> it's like saying, saying um, um. <laughs> so now let's talk about social media and evangelization. Yeah. Evangelization. So people we see a lot of people trying to have maybe concerts online, praise and worship sessions, people having um their homilies that are online now. Mm. How do you think um this affects you? Don't you think for me I feel okay, let me talk about myself first. Well I think um for me it's a lot of content when I see a lot of people putting out things, talking about um the church, God and everything. Should we be selective? For me, I'm very selective. I'm, I, I select if what I want. If you are not selective, what's the point? If you and so if I watch anything. one one time and then I see that, oh, it doesn't really sit well with me. Even if I see another one and then one million people are there, I might not join mm. because of just one thing. So how is it for you? Same thing. You have to be selective and very deliberate about what you consume on social media. Yeah. If, especially with regards to um, evangelism, church stuff, because plenty, plenty false doctrines are there. And also, social media has given false prophets a bigger voice than they should have. As because in, everybody has access to you Facebook, know that I watched, Let me tell you, Twitter. I watched, uh-huh. okay, I watched a video on YouTube once. And then this pastor just kept telling this man that, they were speak, I think they were speaking um, Swahili or something. So they were speaking this language and I was telling the man, oh, have you seen me before? It's like, the man knows that's the plan. So the mm. man was like, yes, I've seen you. He said, no, you have not seen <laughs> No, you have not seen me. And the man said, I have oh, they seen you. They were trying you. to fake a you miracle. They were trying to fake the miracle. And the man was like, yes, I have seen you before. I saw you at 1 p.m. He said, oh, he saw... And you, do you know what? What made, what pained me in all of this? I, I, I laughed. Oh, no. <laughs> but, I sure was a skit. It was a skit, Chima, because this man is a popular man of God. Wow. So, <laughs> when I, what pained me about that video was the fact that I could tell that a lot of people were just gullible. And they were just shouting and saying, yeah. And I went to the comment section. People are saying, go. I'm like, who are these people watching this video? And they don't. But in the comment section, a lot of people will be like, it's it's wrong. It's fake and all that. But then people in the church don't even know it's wrong. Don't know it's fake. Because the man kept telling this guy, oh, you can't speak English. And the guy was speaking English. The guy was speaking English. So he, was just, he just kept telling the guy, oh, you don't understand English. Don't worry. Someone should bring an interpreter. I'm like, I can't speak English. <laughs> It was a very funny one. So a lot of people don't actually know what social media, social media does to them, especially when it comes to evangelization, putting the things of God out there. So how careful do you think people should be, especially the young people of today who are looking for maybe they're trying to set their foot right in God and look for um, the right messages? To be frank, uh, I don't know how best to answer this question okay. because I also believe it is down to the person. For example, if somebody may just find himself in the wrong congregation, you understand, and then may be obligated to try and support his church, ministry, whatever, on social media, you understand. So if, for example, I go to church A, mm-hmm. and then what my pastor in church A tells me is posted on social media, I may feel obligated to retweet or, or repost share, or yeah. share because that is my church. But now, how would except the person has a proper spirit of discernment for him to know that a um, pastor, pastor of church A is saying rubbish, <laughs> then he knows that he won't post or retweet or whatever on social media. So I think the person just has to have discernment first for you to know. Because even if you see something on social media, you may be like, hmm, word, word, hmm, hmm, deep, deep, oh, Jesus, man of God, all yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. So and you are think, sharing rubbish. You think young people can do more with social media a lot, than they a do? A lot, a lot. We are doing quite a lot now, but I still think we can do a lot. A lot uh, more. There's, in the business side, there's plenty of options to be explored. In the evangelization side, like what we are doing with CFF on our chat rooms, um, that's, that's an angle that a lot of people can yeah. explore. Um, there are, in fact, there's so much to be done. I, I think I, I was in a research once and then I was carrying out a research on um, social media and businesses sometimes. And then I realized that a lot of businesses in Nigeria, they don't use Pinterest. Because I just, I was just checking and I'm like, okay, you have a Facebook account, a Twitter account, you have um, um, LinkedIn, but there's no Pinterest where people want to actually see what, because that, that's where people get go to, to check out your pictures to see what you do. But then you don't have Pinterest because, and you're a business that is very active on Twitter. You reply everybody. Because engagement is key. You, 
you reply everybody you you like all their comments but then you don't have you don't actually show them what you do so i think people should explore all their there's so many platforms to be used and pinterest is one of them it's not just for makeup artists it's not just for interior design but another thing that people have to notice is that you have to make sure that you understand where your audience is are. based okay. so if you if you probably don't have an audience on pinterest then why that's what bother? you think people go there because if i'm going to look for something and i check on linkedin i, I might not see a lot i go on instagram because that's where i'll see a lot mm -hmm. then facebook i might not see mm -hmm. a lot I will just go on Pinterest because I want to see pictures. There are no text. It's either infographics or plain images. Do you understand? So I think that's... Thank you so much, Shima. Thank you so much for sticking with us till the end of the show. It was such a beautiful episode and I'm sure you enjoyed it. Thank you. So we're not going anywhere until we meet with Collins on the Ordinary Ministers of the Confirmation. Stay with us. Thank you very much, Nonso. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Know Your Faith series. I'm Collins and today we'll be focusing on the sacrament of confirmation, the meaning, its effect and the ordinary ministers. So according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church in paragraph 1285, it states that by the sacrament of confirmation, the baptized are more perfectly bound to the church and are enriched with the special strength of the Holy Spirit. Hence, they are, as true witnesses, more strictly obliged to spread and defend the faith by word and deed. Basically, what this paragraph is just saying is that after baptism, once you get confirmed, if baptism, you know, makes us children of God and members of the church, confirmation gives us a strong foot and makes us, you know, soldiers for Christ. And we now need to go out and do his work, both in faith and in deeds. In summary, it is a sacrament in which one is confirmed and also receives the gifts of the Holy Spirit through the imposition of the hand and the anointing by the bishop. Now, we'll look at the effects of the sacrament of confirmation according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church in paragraph 1303. First, it says that it roots us, it roots us more deeply in divine filiation. Like I said earlier, as baptism makes us, you know, children of God, the confirmation actually, you know, makes us soldiers for Christ and gives us that stronger foot to be able to fight the, uh, fight the good fight, basically. Number two, to unite us more firmly to Jesus Christ. I think this is self-explanatory. Once you become confirmed, you become, you know, a step closer to Jesus. Three, it increases the gifts of the Holy Spirit in us. I believe that we already know the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. And once we get confirmed, once you're willing to, you know, accept the Holy Spirit, it obviously increases these gifts in you. Number four, it renders our bond with the church, that is the body of Christ, more perfect. And finally, it gives us a special strength of the Holy Spirit to spread and defend the faith and word. So those are the five effects according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church in paragraph 1303. Now, the ordinary ministers of this sacrament is the bishop, generally. But um, however, we, especially in our country, Nigeria here, we notice that during confirmation, the bishop comes to a church uh, to, you know, confirm students who have been in class for probably six months, one year. Some parishes do as much as two, three years. It depends. And upon getting to the church, he also, the local priests can also, with the um, power of the bishop, also administer the sacrament. So, if you find yourself in a confirmation you know, service and you find out that the priest and not the bishop is the one administering the sacrament, there is nothing wrong. It is also very, very, very much correct. So that is for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's go back to CFF. Welcome back. This is Kathleen Faith Forum. Thank you so much, Collins, for that. It was a nice one. Yep. Chima, yep. thank you so oh, much for being here. My guy, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm not man. your guy. My guy, my G. I'm not. No, so. <laughs> <laughs> so our saint for the week is Carlo Acutis. Um, He was uh, an English-born Italian Catholic youth, an amateur um, computer programmer who is best known for documenting 
the Eucharistic miracles around the world and organized them onto a website that he created before his death from leukemia. He was noted for his cheerfulness, computer skills, and deep devotion to the Eucharist, which became a core theme of his life. He was beatified on the 10th of October 2020, just last year. I mean, he's so close to us. One thing that stood out for me in his story when I read it was the fact that he frequently reflected in front of the tabernacle, either before mass or after mass, which is one beautiful thing that I think a lot of people should emulate. And that's one attitude we need to really carry on in our lives. Chima, I hope you. No, yeah, yeah, I, I don't get choice now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much for sticking with us. Don't forget, you can watch this episode and other episodes on our YouTube channel at Dominican Media Present. Also send your questions and your suggestions to our social media platforms at CFF on TV. And on Tuesday, you can join our chat room with the hashtag CFF chat room. Our question for Tuesday by 7 p.m. is, what would happen to make you stay away from social media? Also, this is a call for you to sponsor our show because we truly rely on your sponsorship. And if you want to do this, reach out to us on the phone number on our screen below and also the email address on the screen below. Thank you so much for watching the program. Thank you, Chima. Let's say together, till we meet again, keep, keep being, being saints in, in jeans and, and shirts. shirts.